Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at making a Tree of Life pendant. Now I know this has been done lots of times over and over again. It's the go-to for most wire workers. But I wanted to do one. I wanted to keep it quite basic but make it a little bit different from just being a, a basic frame and a tree in the middle. So I've added this uh, wonderful bead edging to it to give it another dimension. Uh, we're also going to make the bay a little bit different, so like so. And we've got this uh, nice swirl at each side which gives it another little design feature. Um, I've patinaed this. I've already recorded a patina video to share with you, so I will be sharing that video also around about the same time. I don't know whether it'll be just before or just after, but it will be within days of each other. And we're going to look at how to create our tree, how to create our frame, how to add our chips and nuggets. You don't have to add, add chips and nuggets, you can add seed beads. We're going to be using um, our beads around the side, which are around about a three millimeter size bead but you could also use a size 8 seed bead, which would work perfectly well. In fact, I have a similar type pendant, which has got that same type of edging there. So I'll be making this in another tutorial. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna have a quick look at what we're gonna be using first of all. So we are going to be needing some wire. So the wire we're gonna be using is I'm using bare copper on all of these because I wanted to patina these. I'm going to use some 1.25 wire for the frame. There we go, 1.25 wire for the frame, millimeter gauge wire for the frame. We're going to be using a 0.9 millimeter to as part of the adding the beads around the side here. If you haven't got 0.9, you can use a 0.8 or a 1 millimeter. As long as your wire will go through the beads that you're going to use on the edge, that is fine but a thicker wire I wouldn't go down to a 0.6 because it does need to have some strength and we're going to be using a 0.4 millimeter to make our tree to uh, wrap around the sides to and to aid us to create that lovely edge as well i'm going to be using some chips and nuggets i'm going to use some garnet in the one that i'm going to be making now we'll also briefly be using a hammer and block even though we're using the 1.25 i do like to hammer it slightly just to work on it and it'll give us a really good base to work on and if you've got a good base to work on it will make life so much easier as we go along. The tools that we're going to be using are pretty basic tools. We're going to be using some chain nose or narrow nose pliers, some flush cutters or snips, round nose pliers and some bell making pliers. If you haven't got bell making pliers you will be able to use your round nose pliers no problem at all. The other thing that we need is a mandrel of some sort. So my mandrel measures around about three and a half centimetres across and I usually use kind of the, this uh, hand cream. But anything that's around about similar, it's pretty similar to Renaissance wax, that sort of size. But it, it's up to you what size your your pendant you want it to be. If you if you can't find an actual professional mandrel, do what I do and just grab something around the house. There's always something around that you can use as a mandrel, trust me. Okay, so I'm just going to move up. Sorry, did I mention that? Yes, I did mention the three mil beads. <laughs> so we're going to be moving all this out of the way and we'll start off with making that frame. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so to begin with, we are going to be looking at using our 1.25 millimeter wire, gauge wire. This is gonna form our frame. I've cut off a piece that's probably about 25 centimeters long. And we just want it I mean, nice and warm in our hands. And I always think if you're gonna warm your wire this bit, it's usually the warmest part of your hand. So just kind of running it along that bit there will make it nice and usable, malleable. So I'm going to use my trusty uh, hand cream and the lid of that to form a shape around. So just forming that circle around there. You can see that's crossed over and cross it over pretty far with each other and then you know you've got that full circle. Give it a nice tug at each side and really form that circle around. Now it, we, it will kind of bounce off a little bit, that's fine, we'll just use that shape. 
it doesn't have to be perfect unless you're making a series of them that are all the exact same size. So where these wires cross each other, we're going to grab the first wire. So I'm going to grab the one at this side. So this is this wire here. And I'm going to turn this so we create a 90 degree angle away from that circle. OK, and then I'm going to turn it over to the opposite side. And then what I want to do is grab it again. But if you can see that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's very, very slightly like a, a millimetre or so just in just more to this side just because when I turn it we want them to come nicely together like so so let's just pull them out to one side so I know that because when you when we turn it we kind of get that little extra bit of a turn especially when you're using a thicker wire so we want them to come nice and make these just spend a little bit of time with your pliers just making these little parts nice and straight okay so now we can lose some of this wire so what i want you to do is cut this wire to be around about let's see if that's let's um measure it if we've got something to measure it with there we are we'll take measure here i like to give you the right measurements if i can so yeah, about three centimetres, so three centimetres is here off this side and three centimetres for this side too. There we go, so now I know I've got even sides. So once we've cut these and we've got these nice and even, what we want to do is hammer our wire. So very, very gently. We're going to use a steel block. I've got a rubber block underneath it just to dull the sound a bit because it is quite noisy. It will still be noisy. And what I want to do is I want to hammer the frame, this whole round section here, but I don't want to hammer any of this section here, okay, because we want that to stay nice and malleable. So I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to hold it so it keeps that nice circle and just tappy, tappy, tappy. And what I'm doing is I'm using a rawhide hammer. If you haven't got a rawhide hammer, you can use your boil ball ball pin hammer which is fine it might flatten the wire a little bit but in the grand scheme of things that doesn't matter because we're going to be wrapping over that wire anyway so what i want to do is create a really really nice strong frame so i'm holding the the hammer right at the end so i'm using the weight of the hammer to come down onto the wire to create that force i'm not actually using the hammer and pushing down with it it's just the weight of the hammer that I'm using. So I'm just going to turn that over and tappy, tappy, tappy all the way around. And you will find, especially, I always say if you've never hammered before, do two, hammer one and not the other one, and you will feel the difference. It's a bit hard to sometimes feel the difference if you've only got just one of those in front of you. So I'm just going to move that block out of the way. And now what we want to do is actually start weaving our bale. I'm just going to move that out of the way there. So I've just got a piece of my 0.4 wire. This is about 50 centimetres long. It's probably more than what you're actually going to need. And I'm going to weave my bale section. So if we look at the actual pendant, my bale is actually only woven at the front. And then we have a loop coming down at the back to create that bale section. So it's a really kind of easy bale to, to wrap. If you're somebody that kind of dreads that wrapping a bale, this is really nice and easy and quick. So I'm going to pop my wire in between these two uh, kind of tails and I'm going to wrap the side furthest from me twice, two or three times and get them wrapped nice and tight together and just hold that tail out of the way. Then I'm going to kind of bring these together with my fingers. I'm just going to bring them together slightly and that means that I can wrap it around this side and get these nice and close together at that very bottom. Okay, so I've wrapped around this wire twice, opposite side twice. So it's a figure of eight weave. So we're coming under and over twice to the opposite side, which is from the underneath and over twice. And we're just going to continue doing that until we've made that little detailed weave at the front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, do one, two, pushing them down and keeping the little bit of tension is actually the tension's in my hand back here on my wire. So I'm just holding the wire here in between these fingers here and that's keeping that tension and giving me a really nice neat weave. So we're just going to come up a little bit more. of times and we'll finish on this side once two wraps on that side pulling that across so this is going to be the back I'm going to cut that on the back there we go I can look at this tail at the other side and cut that nice and short okay nip in any ends that need to be nipped in There we go. So now all we need to do is turn these ends backwards and for that I'm going to use my um, trusty six step baling pliers. I'm going to use this section here but if you haven't got baling pliers if we look at that it's very similar to kind of the widest part of a standard set of round nose pliers so use the kind of widest parts of that if you need to. Okay so I'm going to start bringing that down. So pulling that down and winding that down towards the back of our pendant so we've brought that loop all the way down there and again with this side all the way down there okay so now we've got two loops on the back we're just going to make sure that these are lined up so just by using your pliers and wiggling them Make sure they're right up to the actual weave here and make sure that when we look from the front we can't really see them as much so I think they need to kind of come in a little bit just to make it aesthetically pleasing. So like so, I'm quite happy with that. I'm happy with my frames not, not gone out of um, shape because we hammered it and we've got that really nice strong shape and I'm happy to move on to the next stage. There we go, and I'll just move things, some things out of the way and I'll see you again in two seconds. Okay, so for this next section, we're going to look at starting to form the tree trunk and the roots of the tree. So I've cut 20 pieces of 0.4 wire. They're all approximately about 20 centimetres each length, which when we look at our pendant, it's plenty of length. We've got lots and lots of length there. But we've got to remember there is a lot of wrapping around the outside of the frame as well. So that's why we have that additional length. So I'm going to look at, if we think my wires kind of end, end here and here, I'm going to look at making my tree around about here in this sort of the halfway mark being at the top of my pendant. So I want my tree trunk to be around about here because I want to be able to work with a lot more wire at this side than I do this side because this is just the roots and it's just going to be quite a short wrap around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that there. I'm just going to kind of grab these with my pliers just to flatten them out a little bit and then I can kind of twist them a little bit and twist this underneath. Okay so I'm going to pop my pliers in there and twist. Now you can just do this with your fingers it's easier to kind of splay them out a little bit at each side. You can do it with your fingers like so. I just find it easier on my hands if I actually use my pliers. And that way I can get a little bit of strength in to kind of get that bend in my tree. So I like a bit of a bend in my tree trunk as well. It's like more like a bonsai tree or something like that. Okay, so because it's just a small pendant, we only need a little tree trunk. So I'm quite happy with that there. And now we're going to start to look at working on the bottom part. So we're going to totally ignore all this top part here. And just for a minute, we're just going to work on all these bottom parts here. So you're going to have to kind of go through this quite methodically and start looking at your wires. So we want to look at pairs that sit nicely together and they will sit nice and parallel. So we're going to work with all of these in pairs so I can see one pair there, take that to one side, another pair there. So 
So this might take you seconds, it might take you 10 minutes to kind of organise everything. It's, um, it's one of those things. So all in pairs, like so. Splay them out a little bit just so you can see what's going on a bit better and work around until you've got all of your pairs. So let's just take a look here. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes sorting these out and that will give you time to sort yours out too if you're making along. So pause the video here. So I'm happy now I've got all my pairs in place. And what I want to do is start attaching them to my frame. Now I only want my roots to be kind of in this little section at the bottom here. So just this little section. So make sure you don't set this too high and you've got kind of even roots to branches because generally it should be the roots are quite low down and just at the very bottom there. Now the other thing that might help you just a little, I can just grab this here. Um, is a little bit of low tack tape just to kind of hold it in place for you. You don't have to use this. I often don't use this for this reason, but I will show you with it on for this one. So I'm going to take quite a, a longish piece of tape. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of bring these down a little bit. And I just want to pop it across there so that I know that my tree is where I want it to be. So I can pop that around and just get this to stay in place where I want it to be. And especially if you want to kind of offset your tree a little bit, you'll be able to kind of set where you want it. So this one, I kind of took it off to one side. With this one, I, I'm, I'm tending to lean towards the going quite straight up the centre with this one so but just by doing that we'll be taking that off in a few minutes so don't worry about it it's just going to give you something to hold and know that you're not moving your tree around and it means you can let go of it as well before you've even started so i'm going to start this and then i will join you after i've finished it i'm going to show you how we start i generally start in the middle and then work one way and then work the opposite way so our wires are all in pairs still and we're going to kind of work in that middle pair and it's going to come over the front, making sure they stay nice and parallel to each other. So coming over the front and then we're going to wrap around the frame. So I want to come up in this little gap here. So, and then pull in. Now, because it feels quite delicate at the moment, it might be easier to kind of grab your pliers and pull them in tighter with your pliers like so. And then again, so you can do a couple of wraps, you can do five wraps. Remember, we are talking about a tree, it's natural, it's not perfectly even. I really do dislike seeing Tree of Lives where they're all perfectly even, all the branches are exactly the same, all the roots are exactly the same. That, that for me, it's fine if that's what you like, it's, everybody's got their own choice, but for me that does not reflect nature. Nature is more random and individual. So then I'm going to cut them off so it's really, really quite close to the wire, but the wires are on the back. And then I'm just going to grab my pliers and then kind of just tilt up and smooth those ends around so they're following the wire. Okay. Now, any wires on the edges, we want them to be tucked in as neatly as possible. At the moment, I can't feel that wire at all. But with this pendant, we are going to kind of cover those edges. So if you're not very, very confident, we will be covering them anyway. But we still want it not to catch on people's clothes. So do think about that. Then turn it back over to the front again. And then we're going to work on the next set of wires. So these two are this side. I also don't want you to think about kind of them being kind of wavy or anything at the moment. We do that afterwards. So these are just going straight and keeping them parallel and coming around the frame in this gap here. So coming back around the frame and pulling tight. If you don't feel like you've got it tight enough, you use your pliers. That one felt okay. And just a matter of keeping them nice and smooth. Now if you wanted to, you could do these individually. I just find it nicer and easier really to do them kind of in tandem, in, in pairs. 
So pulling them nice and tight, making sure everything's squeezed up nicely together. And turning towards the back again, cutting off and smoothing around, making sure that we get a really nice finish. So this is something that when you're making a tree of life, never rush it because you want to make sure you get a really good finish, a really neat finish. If you want a really beautiful tree of life, it really has to have a neat finish. It has to have that random design of a tree, but really well finished off. Okay, so you're going to continue doing this all the way up this side. So you want it to sit in this bottom section here, and then you're going to work from this side to this side and I will meet you back there in just a few seconds. So I've wrapped all the way around and around about that halfway point I've uh, just changed direction so that I'm wrapping in, in this direction so it's kind of just wrapping two together there and I'm just going to finish off this last one and then I'll show you what to do to make the roots a little bit more rooty I guess. So pulling that around and finishing off this last one. Pulling that really quite nice and tight around there. Making sure all these wraps are really nice and close together. You do want some gaps, especially when we're doing the other parts because we're gonna be wrapping into it when we pop that edge on, but we don't want a lot of gaps. Okay, so now we've got these and they're all kind of pretty straight okay so what I tend to do is I pop some pliers in and make those kinks in there now don't be tempted to put your chain nose pliers in because you will get angles which aren't very tree like so what I tend to do is pop my round nose pliers in and just make little moves just tiny little moves just grab and twist a little bit it doesn't have to be massive just grab each one of those and twist a little bit. The wire will kind of stretch a little bit as it needs to. So bringing those in and just getting it doesn't not every single one has to be has to have a kink. It's not, that's not a necessity. It's just kind of popping that little bit more detail in there just to make it more lifelike. Okay, so now we can uh, remove our tape. So which way around are we? Where is the end of my tape? There we go. So taking this tape off, because it's a low tack tape, it will come off really nice and easily. Let's put that in the bin. So now we have to do the whole organizing of wires again. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do. What we're going to do into fours this time. So you are going to have to take a little bit of time sorting out your wires. So I'm going to find my first four, which are going to be this four here. So you're going to find, because we've got 20 wires, you'll find five fours. And then what you're going to do is each time you find your four, you're going to kind of make that little twist to make that main branch. Okay, so I find it easier to use my pliers to do that. So just pop your pliers in, just nice and gently. We don't want to be gripping it too much. And we just want that initial part of the branch. It's only a tiny little piece. And then once you've got your four twisted, then you're going to move to two and twist those. So it's easier to twist when they're more splayed apart if you're just going to use your fingers. And you can kind of twist the whole thing. So twisty, twisty, like so. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a small amount again. And then this on the opposite side. So cross these over so they're kind of splayed out against each other and then hold them splayed apart and twist. So you can either twist your fingers or twist the whole thing which I usually find twisting the whole thing is a little bit easier. Okay, so now these ones are ready to add our gemstones, seed beads, chips, nuggets, whatever. So I'm going to work around and create my main branch and two little branches 
and then these are going to be my four mini branches. So I'm going to work around and do all the rest of these and I will join you back when I've got all my branches in place and ready to start adding our gemstones. So now I have all my main branches and my little sub branches all in place. So we've got our four going to twos and then we've got the single ones that we're going to add our gemstones onto. So now we can start adding and it's very very similar to the way that we added at the bottom apart from we'll be using one uh, branch at a time so it's up to you whether you start in the top of the middle or the sides it's, it's entirely up to you i tend to kind of splay them out where i want them to be and then i know kind of what direction i want to to go for and then maybe kind of work from the middle and then out to each side just so that we don't get them kind of too bunched up so let's start at the top in the middle here so I'm going to just add my chips and nuggets. So these are beautiful garnets. So let's pop some of these on. And be quite random with the sizes because uh, like I was saying earlier about um, trees, they, you know, they're not perfect. They are natural and more random. So just make sure that your gemstones are going to fit in that space there. So... You might want to make a few little bends in these if you want to. Mine have kind of bent naturally on their own, but if you want to, you can make a few bends. So once you've got that in there, I'm going to take that one straight up to the top there. And then it's just a matter of wrapping around the frame. And wrap around so that you've got kind of five or six wraps on each. Don't be too perfect with how many wraps. Some, some will have more than others. And sometimes you'll find you've got gaps to fill in and just sort of work bit by bit and see how it, it goes for you and I wouldn't actually cut these ends off just yet because you might find that somewhere along the line you might need to kind of move these around and fill little gaps, gaps in so just I would just leave them kind of as so at the moment. So I'm going to add some more onto my next branch and this probably is the bit that takes the longest is actually threading these on. But you get a nice good look at all your gemstones as well. Just make sure you discard any that feel sharp. That one actually feels quite sharp. Because you've got to think this could be lying sort of on somebody's décolletage, on somebody's neckline. So you don't want them to be uncomfortable with it on. Okay, so I'm going to wrap that one on there. And I can see that's going to kind of sit nicely sort of quite close together so I'm going to continue wrapping in this direction so wherever you decide to add you can kind of choose which direction you're going to kind of move to okay so keep wrapping like that so actually I'm going to wrap that way and then bunch them up together like so and don't be too sort of I've gone with only one of these going this way and the rest are going this way so it's kind of uneven but I could, I could keep, I'm sorry I keep going on about it. Trees are not perfectly even so try to be a little bit more random about it if you can. Okay so we've got a few wraps on that one like I say we'll continue doing these wraps at the end and fill all these gaps and we're going to add some more onto this one now so i'm just going to continue doing this and start building up and then i'll meet you back when i've got most of my branches done and we'll look at just finishing these off so i'll see you back in a few seconds so this is just a little midway catch up. So I'm halfway through putting these on. On this side, because I've done this whole side, I've trimmed the ends just like we did when we did the uh, the bottom there and made sure they're nice and smooth. And I just wanted to make a note to you. It's not all about just going straight to the edge. We kind of need to bunch these up and kind of make them more, more textured like. And if you look here, if I just show you here, I've actually got a slightly bit longer than what I actually need amount of beads because I want to kind of squish them up together just because so it'll cause that that little bit of undulation and a little bit of more texture to our design and that's what's going to give us that really nice dense tree uh, leaf like look. 
So I just wanted to make a point of that as I'm coming around to not be too kind of just straight out to the edge, sort of let them kind of curve around each other and bunch them up a little bit so it gives you kind of a little bit more of a, a 3D. So if I hold that, it's not they're not actually just laid inside the wire, they're kind of undulating as well. So um, yeah, just take that into account as you're wrapping and as you're, you're building your way around. So you can see there if I hold that. On that side you can see that's coming come, it's quite pronounced coming out but I think that gives you a really really nice look for your tree too so I'm going to continue around and I'll meet you when I get back to the bottom of this side of the tree so I've got all the way around we can see our tree is there it's beautiful I love this garnet so and just to show you how I'd been finishing off also, don't worry that if we've got any gaps with no wraps in where you've kind of changed direction that, that you're wrapping, it's not really going to be visible really once once we've put this edge on. But if you did want to just wrap an extra piece of wire around that, that wouldn't be a problem at all. You just add an extra little bit of wire and pop some wraps on. So what I've done is I've pulled this wire over to the back. And I'm going to snip it off, making sure we don't snip the branch at the other side, making sure you just snip it that very end there. And then just where you snip that, you just want to make sure that you smooth that in. So just taking your pliers and just making sure that edge is smoothed in. Sometimes you can just use the very side of your plier just to make sure there's nothing sharp on the edge. And just make sure you give it a good kind of feel all the way around. Even though this edge is going to be kind of against another piece of wire, we still don't want anything to catch on bits of clothes. So now what you could do is you could leave your pendant just like this perfectly acceptable but I like to add an edge on if possible just to make it look a little bit more finished off a little bit more um, a bit, substan bit more substantial okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that bead edge around the around the side so moving on to making that frame for around the outside of our pendant what we need to do is we need to start with a swirl on one end of our wire now the piece of wire I've got is a 0.9 millimeter you can use whatever wire will go through your beads nice and easily um, mine are three millimeter beads you can also use a size 8 which is a nice kind of um, balance for the size uh, size 8 seed bead or something similar but just make sure your this base wire the 0.9 or 0.8 or 1 mil whichever you're using a nice structural wire not the 0.25 that's too thick the not uh, 1.25 um, will go through your beads that's essential okay so we're going to pop a little swirl just on the end of here so I'm going to go in with my riding nose pliers so I'm going to go right to the very tip I'm going to start to make that turn Okay, so I've just got that very tiny bit of a turn on there. Then I'm going to reposition my pliers and bring this around. So I'm starting to make that full turn, but just as always, I always nip off that very end just so that I know that we've started on a curve and not that very, very flat tip that we've got there. So back in again with my pliers, and I'm using my finger to kind of uh, press against and bring this all together and I'm just going to start turning this so that it starts to come around on itself so bringing that around on itself and you'll get to a point where you can't turn it anymore with the round nose pliers this is where you come in with your flat nose or chain nose pliers and hold on with that full length of the, the pliers so all the way across that swirl and start turning you can either turn the wire downwards or you can grip and turn the swirl. But we don't want it too big, so that's about the right size. Okay, now this is going to sit around about here. Okay, and what we want to do is anchor this onto the frame using some 0.4 wire. So I've cut around about a meter of wire off. So this is our, my 0.4 wire. And I'm gonna to start to attach this edging to the side of our frame. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some wire to my um, this piece. So I'm going to attach my wire to here. I'm just going to do that by popping that in and anchoring that around. So one, two, three, and my wire's coming over the back and to the front there. So my wire's coming underneath. Okay, so my working wire's underneath this way. 
like so. Just let that focus. There we go. And we've got a little tail wire there as well. And we're going to add a couple of beads onto here. So adding one and two. And then what I want to do is I need to pop my wire behind my swirl in front. Okay, and then holding all those together, I'm going to bring the end, find the end of my weaving wire, which is easier said than done when you're trying to hold something still with the other hand. So all the way through. And what we want to do is bring this wire up in between this frame here. Okay, so in between here. Now, if you find it difficult to hold this in place, do you remember this little tail that we had right when we wrapped that wire on? Just to anchor that, just pop that around the back if you want to. Pop it around the back and just wrap that little tail around there. And it'll just kind of help. It doesn't have to be tight or anything, just to help you anchor that on. Okay, so my wires come up from the back through to the front, through there. And I'm just going to bring this all the way through. It's more difficult when it's longer when you're trying to keep it still in one place. This will look so much easier when you do it because you won't be having to keep your hand in one place. Okay, so I've come all the way across the back of there and then up and then I'm just going to go over one time. So I'm not actually wrapping that in any other way, it's just going over the back. So this is what it looks like from the back, like so. And then we go ahead and add another two beads. So we're doing this two at a time. If you wanted to do it one at a time, you could do, but I think it looks quite nice two at a time. Just dropped my bead. It's always harder threading beads when you're trying to record. Okay, so popping this down. This this wire may move a little bit backwards and forwards, but don't worry, we can pop that in and just kind of bring your wire down a little bit. So we're following that frame. And again, finding the end of your wire, pushing them beads up, looking at where the beads are, and then we're going to come up through the back of the frame, making sure as you pull this wire through, it does not bend or kink or anything, and making sure that it's laying as nice at the back as it is at the front. Now this is caught on some of them uh, chips, so just making sure we uncatch those and then we can pull these in like so. so that's pulled in tight again now now I've got that nice tight piece in there and I know it's now sitting nicely at the back again so you'll get kind of diagonal pieces of wire at the back and vertical pieces at the front so you'll get that nice even look. So all you need to do is continue putting your two at a two at a two and just as you go just slightly bending that wire around. We don't want any actual bends in it, it'll just come around nicely and I'll meet you when we're almost back at the end. Okay so I'm almost all the way around and I just thought I'd do this last few with you. So I've just continued adding two at a time. If I bring that up you'll be able to see my workings and my little uh, pieces all the way around where I've just added two at a time and just as I've got to this little section here I've made sure my wire's coming around the back of the pendant and not across the front because we're going to finish off with a swirl at the back so we just need to add a few more beads here so I'm going to come up around about there so and making sure that we're not catching any of our chips and nuggets at the back. I'm going to make sure my wire comes around at the right side, like so. And then I can add my two beads on into that gap there. So one, two, like so. And that's just actually worked out really nicely that it's finished right at the right spot. So I can come around the back there I can make sure that that is fully attached by coming through underneath, back through to the front again. So just making sure that's really well attached there and I can just come back up. So this little bit here will just have two little wraps in there 
and then I'm just going to finish it off on a single wire so I'm finishing it off on that wire so just a couple of wraps on that last on that wire that we've just run all the way around and then trim off our working wire like so so that we don't need that just as I was working my way around also remember that little wire that I just wrapped around there just to anchor I trimmed that off as I was as I was going so now all I need to do to finish off is pop that last swirl in so we need probably about an inch and a half like so just to pop a little swirl on the back there and just taking our round nose pliers and we want to wrap it wind it towards this way so we're going to wrap it in this direction so we're going to go wrap downwards towards the pendant so again just start getting that little turn in there snip off the very end and pop our pliers back in and just pop using my finger just to anchor that so just kind of put a little bit of pressure behind it and then I can go in with my pliers and swirl this back down towards my pendant as neatly as possible and just ask that nicely to sit there at the back and now we're done all finished apart from adding a patina if that's what you want to do so there is our completed pendant so your cord or your torque necklace or whichever you want to do would go through this at the back so this would be the back of our pendant so these are my pendants completed this one has a patina this one is the one we just made with the bare copper so in one of my other videos we will go through how to patina so please take a look at that I'll try and pop a link above if I can and um, I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you go on to make one of these tree lives because it, it really is a really nice one to make and it's nice to see that end result and um, it's kind of one of those that I think is is easy when it's broken down so hopefully even a beginner could have a go at this especially with the bale being very simple and once you've made that tree and got the hang of adding the gemstones it's it's quite quite simple and, and a basic wrapping technique without being too much kind of wire weaving so if you've liked my video please if you enjoyed enjoyed my video please pop me a like below i really really would appreciate that and also if you'd like to see more because there's lots 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 more exciting things to come please subscribe and i will see you again very very soon you take care